Hi everyone. Welcome to my channel and welcome to uh to uh reading of the first comic book adaptation of George Orwell's 1984. Okay. This book is has been adapted and illustrated by Fido Nesti and uh, I've heard his name before but I don't know his full biography but when I was setting up our space here uh, this morning I flipped through and at the back of here there's a little biography of Fido and what we'll do we'll have a read through that and we're gonna flip through this thing read some of the fine print read the description just get a nice feel for this beautiful hardcover okay and then what we'll do we'll read um, the first few pages uh, from the beginning at the beginning and then I'm gonna go to chat because we are live streaming this on twitch we'll go to chat uh, on twitch and ask to see where people want to flip to there are 200 243 pages okay so after we read the first few pages we'll uh, figure out where people want to flip to and we can have a read through it and this book I picked up a few months ago and it was uh, it's brand new I haven't read it I flipped just to see what the art looked like and it looks beautiful and it came out in two, uh, 2021 so it came out last year we're in 2022 uh, right now right and I've been dying to read this and I knew I wanted to do a live stream of it so very happy uh, to finally get a feel of how the story is being told here okay I'm glad you can make it for this reading so again George Orwell's 1984 the graphic novel adapted by adapted and illustrated by Fido Nesti okay. let's read the description at the back war is peace freedom is slavery ignorance is strength famous quote from George Orwell's 1984 this might have a hard time focusing there we go in 1984 London is a grim city in the totalitarian state of Oceania 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 where Big Brother is always watching you and the thought police can practically read your mind Winston Smith Winston Smith is a man in grave danger for the simple reason that his memory still functions drawn into a forbidden love affair Winston finds the courage to join a secret revolutionary organization called the Brotherhood dedicated to the destruction of the party together with his beloved Julia he hazards his life in a deadly match against the powers that be with gorgeous evocative art from Fido Nesti this graphic a graphic adaptation of George Orwell's masterpiece provides a new perspective on the iconic story that is still so relevant today George Orwell was born in 1903 in Motihari, Bengal, India. The son of a British colonial civil servant, he was educated at Eton and in 1922 joined the Indian Imperial Police in Burma, resigning in 1927 to become a writer. From 1934 to 1949, he published many novels
many novels, memoirs, essays, and articles. Considered one of the most important, one of the most important writers of the 20th century. He is also the author of Animal Farm, Dawn, and Out in Paris and London. And what is fascism? He died in London in 1950. Fido Nesti was born in Sao Paulo in 1971 and has worked in illustration and comics for over 30 years. His drawings can be seen in the Fola de Sao Paulo uh, newspaper and in the New Yorker, as well as in various books and on covers. Jacket illustration by Fido Nesti, Houghton Mefflin, Hart, Hartcourt, HM hbbooks.com okay. higher in canada 22 dollars us and higher in canada because the exchange rate fluctuates so much right hot and muffin hard court publishing company okay let's check it I love books that have white pages at the beginning. Really, camera has a hard time <laughs> focusing on it, of course. 1984. Okay. George Orwell. This is like crisp, beautiful, crisp hardcover book. It's got to be Winston right there, right? The graphic novel illustrated by Fido Nesti. And 2021, Boston, New York. Right. Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. We got the fine print here, so let's take a look at the fine print. I do like reading the fine print. First US, US edition, 2021, copyright uh, 2021 by the state of Sonia Bron Bronel Orwell and Frederico Carvales Neste. So this is a collaboration. So maybe it didn't come out in uh, the copyright, didn't, didn't expire. It's just a collaboration between the Orwell state and the nasty state, I guess. 1994 copyright 1949 by Harcourt Incorporated and renewed 1977 by Sonia Brown Brownell Orwell. All rights reserved for information about for information about permission to reproduce sections from this book or write to trade um, is that a dot there trade dot that's got to be a dot trade dot permission at hmhco.com or to permissions houghton mifflin hardcore hardcore publishing company three park avenue 19th floor new york new york 10016 first published in brazil in 1984 in 2020 oh first published uh, published in brazil as 1984 in 2020 so i guess the first adaptation of this would have been in portuguese ah oh, that's very cool right 
first published in Great Britain by Penguin Classics as 1984, the graphic novel in 2021. So there's a British uh, version of it as well. hmhbooks.com library of congress catalog in publication data is available blah blah isbn 978-0-35-35992-0 printed in china hcp what are those numbers 10987654321 that's <laughs> That's just ten nine eight seven six five four three two one countdown. Funny, funny, and this is part one. Now there's a biography. When I flip through this at the back, okay, they do have George Orwell and Fido Nesti's biography here. Let's have a read through those, and I'm not sure what this is. What is? This? Oh, this is the appendix. Very cool. Very cool. We're not going to read through the appendix, but check this out. Appendix. The principles of newspeak. Oh, wow. Talk about relevant to the present. Newspeak was the official language of Oceania, Oceania and had been uh, devised to meet the ideological needs of uh, Ingsoc or English socialism. In the year 1984, there was not as yet anyone who used Newspeak as his sole means of communication, either in speech or writing. Very cool, very cool. And at present, we're sort of going through a version of this. And again, someone in the chat at the beginning of us re starting you know the live stream mentioned that this is a book that must be read by all right as well as animal form of course let's read the biography of george orwell okay. george orwell was born in 1903 in Motihari, bengal india the son of a british Oh, we we read these. So this was the same thing that we read here, but it doesn't have all of it. It can't be. 1934, so for novels, animal form. Oh, I wrote the final. No, no, there's some extra stuff here, gang. So we're going to have to read this. For sure, we'll read this. Okay. George Orwell was born in 1903 in Motihari, bengal india the son of a british colonial civil servant he was educated at Eton, and in 1922 joined the indian imperial police in burma resigning in 1927 to become a writer from 1933 to 1949 he published several novels and works of non-fiction the tremendous success of his fair fairy story animal farm 1945 was surpassed only with the publication in 1949 of his masterpiece 1984 orwell wrote the final pages of the novel in a remote house on the island of jura in the scottish uh hebrides where he worked feverishly feverishly in between periods in hospital due to pulmonary tuberculosis he died a few months after his publication in January 1950. I did not know that. Oh my God. That's a pretty important uh, little bit of chronological history there. Wow. After his publication. Wow. Let's check this out. Fido Nesti was born in Sao Paulo in 1971 and has worked in illustration and comics for over 30 years. His drawings can be seen in the Folha de Sao Paulo 
newspaper and in New York ma New Yorker magazine as well as in various books and on covers he has previously illustrated a comic strip adaptation of the Portuguese epic poem the Luciades the Luciades o Luciades e Quadrinos uh, 2006 and a, and a graphic novel a Machina de Goldberg 2012 1984 had a great impact on him when he first read it in the year 1984 while at school and he is still deeply impressed by the way the dystopian world created by Orwell is becoming ever more real he lived in airstrip he lived in air airstrip one for a year between 2000 and 2001 I'm not sure what airstrip one is so okay let's have a read and this is part one okay I don't I read 1984 many many moons ago so I don't remember how it was broken up and I don't think I I looked on my bookshelves for a copy of it if I still had it uh, it wasn't on my bookshelf so it might be in one of my boxes so I couldn't flip through 1984 to find out how 1984 uh, the novel how Orwell broke it up so I'm not sure if he broke it up into parts or not or maybe uh, Nesty Fido Nesty is deciding to break it up like this okay uh, but part one and what we'll do we'll read the first few pages of this and try to end at a you know reasonable point and then we'll go to the chat on twitch and we'll ask people to what page they want us to flip to go read some more a uh, uh, couple of more segments and you can tell this is a fairly large book okay it has 200 uh, 243 pages okay so we can read any of the pages between here and 243 uh, uh, oh nice Joe mentions airstrip one is the name uh, for Britain in the novel very cool thank you for that Joe so over here where we find out he lived in uh, he's basically saying he lived in Britain from 2000 to 2001 very cool very cool very cool very cool part one It was a bright cold day in April and the clocks were striking 13 Winston Smith his chin nuzzled into his into his breast in an effort to escape the vile wind slip quickly through the glass doors of victory mansions though not quickly enough to prevent a swirl a swirl dust from entering along with him
with the poster. Big Brother is watching you. It was no use trying to lift, trying the lift, trying the lift. Even at the best of times, it was seldom working. And at present, the elect electric current was cut off during daylight hours. It was part of the economy drive in preparation for heat week. The flat was seven flights up. Winston, who was 39 and had a, a ferocious ulcer above his right ankle, went slowly. Resting several times on the way. Inside the flat, a voice was reading out a list of figures which had something to do with the nine, ninth three-year plan, the production of big iron. The instrument the telescreen, it was called, could be dimmed, but there was no way of shutting it off. Any sound that Winston made above the level of a very low whisper would be picked up by it. And so long as he remained within the field of vision, which the metal plaque commanded, he could be seen as well as heard. There was a court, there was of course no way of knowing whether you were being watched at any given moment. How often on what system the thought police plugged in or on any individual wire was guesswork. It was even conceivable that they watched everybody all the time. You had to live, did live from habit that became instinct in the assumption that every sound every sound you made was overheard and except in darkness every movement scrutinized Winston kept his back turned to the telescreen it was safer
Let's take a closer look. Read this. This was a London chief city of the air of airship one itself the third most populous of the provinces of Oceania Oceania He tried to squeeze out some childhood memory that should tell him whether it had always been quite like this. Pretty cool. That's the first four pages. Gang, instead of reading chronologically and continuing this reading, Let's flip through this and read some sections. What page would you like to read? Anywhere from page, we're on page 10 right now. Page 11 all the way to 243. We can flip, flip back and forth as well. Okay. If there's anything anybody wants to read. Because we're not going to read this whole book. Would be a nice project though. Look at this. 34 let's go elder god page 34 oh how about we begin from Memories, His memories, memories. How about we read it from page thirty-three? Haha, <laughs> sixty-six is next. How about we begin reading it from page thirty-three? Or. Let's start reading from page 33. Let's build into this because there's love to be had on this page, as you can tell. <laughs> Let's do 33. So we're picking up the story, page 33 from the graphic novel. Let's see if we can get this thing focusing. It was an old rab rabbit bitten pasture with a foot track wandering across it and a molehill here and there. In the ragged hedge on the opposite side of the field, the bows of the elm tree were swaying very faintly in the breeze, their leaves just stirring in dense masses like woman's hair. Somewhere near at hand, though out of sight, there was a clear, slow moving stream where dace, where dace were swimming in the pools under the willow trees.
The girl with dark hair was coming towards him across the field. With what seemed a single movement, she tore off her clothes and flung them disdainfully aside. With his grace and carelessness, the gesture seemed to annihilate a whole culture, a whole system of thought, as though Big Brother and the party and the thought police could all be swept into nothingness by single splendid movement of the arm. Winston woke up with the word Shakespeare on his lips. Shakespeare that too was a gesture belonging to ancient time oh that belonged with that battle single splendid movement of the arm the telescreen was giving forth an ear splitting whistle which continued on the same tone for 30 seconds Bzzz. It was not 7.15, getting up time for office workers. He was doubled up by a violent coughing fit, which nearly always attacked him soon after waking up. 30 to 40, 40 group, take your places, please. Thir 30s to 40s. Arms bending and stretching. One, two, three, four. Come on, comrades. Put a bit of life into it. Winston was wearing on his face the look of grim enjoyment which was considered proper during the physical jerks. He was struggling to think his way backwards into the dim period of his early childhood. It was extraordinarily difficult when there were no external records that you could refer to even the outline of your own life lost this sharpness everything had been different then even the names of countries and the shapes on a map had been different Airstrip 1, for instance, had not been so called in those days. It had been called England or Britain. Though, Lon though London, he felt fairly certain, had always been called London. Winston could not definitely remember a time when his country had not been at war. But it was evident that there had been a fairly long interval of peace during his childhood because one of the one of his early memories was of of an air raid which appeared to take everyone by surprise perhaps it was a time 
when the atomic bomb had fallen on Colchester. He did remember his father's hand clutching his own as they hurled down, down, down into some place deep in the earth, round and round in spiral staircase. Finally, they had emerged into a noisy, crowded place, which he had real, realized to be to be a tube station. We didn't ought to have, have trusted them. I said so, Ma, didn't I? We didn't ought to have trusted the buggers. Piccadilly out way out that way but but which buggers they didn't ought to have trusted Winston could not now remember. Oh, that's him right there and his dad, I guess. Nice battle. Let's keep on reading this. This looks cool. Let's check this out. We'll read a couple more pages here. Since about that time, war had been literally continuous. But to trace out the history of the whole period, to say who was fighting whom at an, any given moment would have been utterly impossible since there was no written record at this moment for example in 1984 if it was 1984 Oceania was a war was at war with Eurasia and in alliance with East Asia and no public or private utterance what was it ever admitted that the three powers had at any time been grouped along different lines. Actually, as Winston, uh, Winston well knew, it was only four years since Oceania, 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 Oceania had been at war with East Asia and in alliance with Eurasia. But that was merely a piece of furtive knowledge which he happened to possess because his memory was not satisfactory under control satisfactorily under control officially the change of partners had never happened the enemy of the moment always represented absolute evil and it followed that any past or future agreement with him was impossible. If the party could trust its hand into the thrust its hand into the past and say of this or that event, it never happened. That surely was more terrifying than mere torture and death. If all accepted the lie, it passed into history and became truth. All that was needed was an endearing series of victories over your own memory. Who controls the past? 
ran the party slogan, controls the future, who controls the present, controls the past. One of the most important quotes from George Orwell's 1984. Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. Beautiful. Stand easy, the instructor yells from the television or telescreen. Winston sank his arms to his sides and slowly refilled his lungs with air. His mind slid away into the labyrinth world of double think, to know and not to know, to be uh, cautious of complete truthfulness while telling carefully constructed lies, to hold simultaneously two opinions which cancelled out, knowing them to be contradictory and believing in both of them. To use logic against logic, to repudiate morality while laying claim to it, to believe that democracy was impossible and that the party was the guardian of democracy, to forget whatever it was necessary to forget, then to draw it back into memory again at the moment when it was needed, and then promptly to forget it again. And above all, to apply the same process to the process itself. That was the ultimate uh, absurdity, absurd, up, uptility. Cauch consciously to induce unconsciousness, and then once again to become unconscious of the act of hypnosis you had just performed. When to understand the world, Double think involved the use of double think. What are the letters in the pictures? O I D. O I D. O I D. And now let's see which one of us can touch our toes, she says. He tried to remember in what year he had first heard mention of Big Brother. He thought it must have been at some time in the 60s, but it was impossible to be certain. In the party histories, of course, Big Brother figured as the leader and guardian of the revolution since his very earliest days. read the rest of this his exploits had been gradually pushed backwards in time until already they extended into the fabulous world of the 40s and 30s when the capitalists in their strange uh, cylindrical hats still rode through the streets 
of London in great gleaming motor cars. Winston could not even remember at what date the party itself had come into existence. He had not believed, he did not believe he had ever heard the word in sock before 1960, but it was impossible that in its old speak form, English socialism, that is to say, it had been current effect, current earlier. English socialism, in sock. Everything melted into mist. Sometimes indeed you could put your finger on a finite lie. It was not true, for example, as was claimed in the party history books, that the party had invented airplanes. <laughs> Winston remembered airplanes since his earliest childhood, but you could prove nothing. Just once in his whole life, he had held in his hands unmistakable document, documentary proof or the, of the falsification of a historical fact. And on that occasion, what is he holding? Let's see. Doesn't want to focus. Smith 6079 Smith W. That's Winston Smith. The television is looking, yelling at him. Yes, you. Bend lower, please. You're not trying. Lower, please. Winston, with a violent lunge, succeeded in touching his toes with knees bent for the first time in several years. Let's check out his workspace. That's his workspace. In the walls of the cu cubicle, there were three orifices. To the left, a large one for newspapers. Oh, that's where they're coming in. Times. To the right of the uh, speak right, a small mnemonic tube for written messages. That's that guy. And in the side wall, within easy reach of Winston's arm, a large oblong slid for the disposable of waste paper. That's that guy right there. Check it out. that say back numbers look at his desk cool. ok 
Okay, gang. Where should we go to next? Should we go to page 66? As someone requested. Let's go to 66. That was an important read. Oh, there's a lady love here. Wait a second. This is important. Should we read a little bit from here? Yes, we must. This is an important event in his life. Yes, let's read before we get to 66. Let's read page 53. Okay, let's read page 53. 53 to 50, uh, 55, I believe. Let's check it out. It was three years ago. It was on a dark evening in a narrow side street near one of the big railway stations. She was standing near a doorway in the wall under a street lamp that hardly gave any light. There she is. It was really the faint, the paint that appeared to me the whiteness of it like a mask and the bright red lips there was nobody else in the street and no telescreens she said two dollars I went with her through the doorway and across a backyard into a basement kitchen. There was a bed against the wall. white lettering on black paper there we go there was a there was a bed against the wall and a lamp on the table turned down very low for the moment it was too difficult to go on winston had an almost overwhelming temptation to shout a string of filthy words at the top of his voice or to bang his head against the wall. His teeth were set on edge. He could have liked to spit simultaneously with the woman in the basement kitchen he thought of. Catherine. Winston was married. He had been married at any rate. Probably he still was married. For so far as he knew, his wife was not dead. He seemed to breathe again the warm, stuffy odor of the basement kitchen. 
an odor compounded of compounded of bugs and dirty clothes and villainous cheap scent but nevertheless alluring because no woman of the party ever used scent only the proles use scent that woman had been his first lapse in two years or thereabouts it was forbidden of course but it was easy enough provided that you could avoid being caught in the act tactically the party was even inclined to encourage prostitution as an outlet for instincts such which could not be altogether suppressed mere debauchery did not matter very much so long as it was fortev and joyless the unforgivable crime was promiscuity between party members the aim was not merely to prevent men and women from forming royal loyalties which it might not be able to control its real undeclared purpose was to remove all pleasure from the sexual act which should be looked on as a slightly disgusting minor operation like having an enema The only, the only recognized purpose of marriage was to beget children for the service of the party. It must be nine, ten, nearly eleven years since Winston and his wife had parted they had only been together for about 15 months very early winston had decided she had not uh, she had not a thought in her head that was not so slogan and there was no uh, imbecility that she was not capable of swallowing if the party handed it out to her yet he could have endured living with her if it had not been for just one thing as soon as he touched her she seemed to wince and stiffen to embrace her was like embracing a jointed wooden image she would lie there with with shut eyes and she had two names for it one was making a baby and the other was our duty to the party yes she had actually used that phrase but luckily no child appeared and in the end she agreed to give up trying and soon thereafter they parted She threw herself down on the bed and at once, without any kind of preliminary, in the most coarse, horrible way you can imagine, pulled up her skirt. He saw himself standing there in the dim lamplight, 
with the smell of bugs and cheap scent in his nostrils and in his heart a feeling of defeat and resentment which even at the that moment was mixed up with the thought of Catherine's Catherine's white body frozen forever by the hypnotic power of the party Why did it always have to be like this? Why could he not have? Have a woman of his own instead of these filthy scuffles at intervals of years. But a real love affair But a real love affair was an almost unthinkable event. The women of the party were all alike. Chastity was as deeply ingrained in them as party loyalty. I turned up the lamp when I saw her in the light. After the darkness, the feeble light of the paraffin lamp had seemed very bright. For the first time, he could see the woman properly. He had taken a step towards her and then halted, full of lust and terror. The paint was plastered so thick on her face that it looked as though it might crack like a cardboard mask but the truly dreadful detail was that her mouth had fallen a little open revealing nothing except a cavernous blackness she had no teeth at all but I went ahead and did it just the same oh. Oh, what a page to read wow. Wow. let's go to page 66 a good place to start page 66 okay I'm just gonna have a sip of tea okay if there is hope it lies in the prose. The words kept coming back to him. He was somewhere in the vague, brown, brown colored slums to the north and east of what had once been St. Pancras Station. In and out of the dark doorways and down 
narrow alleyways that branched off on either side. People swarmed in astonishing numbers, girls in full bloom with crud crudly lipstick mouths and youth who chased chased the girls and swollen waddling women who showed showed you what the girls could be like in 10 years time and old bent creatures shuffling along on sl splayed feet and rag barefooted children who played in the puddles The blue overalls of the party could not be common sight in a street like this. The patrols might stop, stop you. If you happen to run into them. A couple of coppers. May I see your papers, comrade? What are you doing here? The cops ask. What time did you? What time did you leave work? The text says. Is this your usual way home? The constant question. Papers, please. Papers, please. Papers, please. Something that's relevant in our societies right now, right? Not that there was any rule against walking home by an unusual route, but it was enough to draw attention to you if the thought police heard about it. Suddenly, the whole street was in commotion. There were yells of warning from all sides. People were shooting into the doorways like rabbits. Steamers, look out! Governor, bang overhead, heard. Lay down quick! Steamers was a nickname which, for some reason, the proles, proles applied to rocket bombs. Kaboom! and destruction. That's a pretty big bomb that went off. Nice smash, bitch. 
finds a hand. Wow. I'm just checking the chat. It seems to be uh, people having problems with the live stream. Twitch is out. Ah, a lot of people getting buffering going on. How's our timing? We're an hour and a half in. What do you guys think? Should we call it a stream? We got a really good feel of what this book is about. They are coming for our stream. Too much truth in one place, Holy God says. Oh, look at this splash page game. Wow, look at this splash page. Let's flip through this a little bit. War is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. What a splash page. Wow. This is a great buy of a comic book, of a graphic novel. The stream is okay, Elder God. Okay. Beautiful. But let's do this. Let's flip through this and see if we find any uh, just chat. And chat is messed up. Okay. A little more. Let's do. Should we just flip? Oh, here's part two. So all of that was part one. All of that was part one. Right? That's cool. Here's part two. Same type of beginning as part one. Take a look. Right? Here's part one. Here's part two. Same style of beginning. Let's read the first few pages of part two then. Yeah? Let's read the first few pages here. Stream is okay. Awesome. Kiwi fella. Thank you. So we're on page 84 of graphic, adapt graphic novel adap adaptation of George Wells, 1984 by Fito Nesti. Okay. Let's take a look at this. It was the middle of the morning and Winston had left his cubicle to go to the lavatory. A sol solitary figure was coming towards him. It was her. Oh, she trips, falls down. Ouch. Who is her? Is this someone he saw? before that we missed a curious emotion stirred in Winston's heart in front of him was an enemy who was trying to kill him really in front of him also was a human creature in pain and perhaps with a broken bone you're hurt Winston says or asks it's nothing my arm It'll be all right in a second, she says. You haven't broken anything? Winston asks. I only gave my wrist a bit of a bang. Thanks, comrade, she says. Whatever was written on the paper, it must have some kind of political meaning. So far as you could see, there were two possibilities. One, much the more likely, was that the girl 
was an agent of the thought police and what was written on the paper might be a threat a summons an order to commit suicide a trap of some description what's this we missed something what's this what's this oh we jumped a little bit i forgot to read this <laughs> we jumped over this well, oh you missed three panels you missed the whole story so over here winston asks her you haven't broken anything and then the girl says i only gave my wrist a bit of a bang thanks comrade and then we go to this panel they had been standing straight in front of a telescreen when the thing happened nevertheless it had been very difficult not to betray a momentary surprise for in the two or three seconds while he was helping her up the girl had slipped something into his hand it was a scrap of paper folded into a square whatever was written on the paper it must have some kind of political meaning so far as he could see there were two possibilities one much much the more likely was that the girl was an agent of the thought police and what was written on the paper might be a threat a summons an order to commit suicide a trap of some dis description another was that the message came from some kind of underground organization perhaps the brotherhood existed after all His heart bumped in his breast with frightening loudness, and it was with difficulty that he kept his voice from trembling as he murmured his figures into the speak right. Eight minutes had gone by. He drew the next batch of work towards him with the scrap of paper on top of it I love you the scrap of paper says that's the note and he's sitting there at his cubicle right? that looks like the guy's image on the big brother I love you the note says For several seconds, he was too stunned even to throw the incriminating thing into the memory hole. When he did so, although he knew very well the danger of showing too much interest, he could not resist reading it again. Just to make sure that the words were really there for the rest of the morning it was very difficult to work what was even worse than having to focus his mind on a series of niggling jobs was the need to conceal his agitation from the telescreen he 
he felt as though a fire were burning in his belly. At night, he wolfed another tasteless meal in the canteen and hurried off to the community center. He took part in the solemn foolery of a discussion group, played two games of table tennis, swallowed several glasses of gin, and sat for half an hour through a lecture entitled Ing Sok in relation to chess. His soul, his soul withered. His soul wreathed with boredom, but at the sight of the words, I love you, the desire to stay alive had welled up in him. Big brother, we're watching you. That's what the poster is. How to get in touch with the girl and arrange a meeting. Finally, he decided that the safest place was the canteen, and a week later, he got her at a table by herself. They were not too near the telescreen, and with a sufficient buzz of conversation to exchange a few words. In a low murmur, Winston began speaking. Neither of them looked up. What time do you leave work? Winston asked. 18.30, she replies. Where can we meet? He asks. Victory Square near the monument. She replies, it's full of telescreens. It doesn't matter if there's a crowd. Any signal, Winston asks. No, don't come up to me until you see me among a lot of people and don't look at me. Just keep somewhere near me, she says. What time? 19 hours. All right, Winston says. This is an important event in his life. Oh, let's read the next, uh, let's read the rest of this. This looks cool. Winston was in the, in Victory Square before the appointment time. We gathered from some shout, from some shouted remarks that a convoy of Eurasian prisoners was passing. There she is. Can you get Sunday afternoon off? She asks. Yes, Winston replies. Then listen carefully. 
go to Paddington Station. With a sort of military precision that astonished him, she outlined the route that he was to follow. A half, half hour railway journey, turn left outside the station, two kilometers along the roads, road, a gate with the top bar missing, a path across the field, a grass grown lane. A track between bushes a dead tree within mo with moss on it there's the prisoners look at the crowd yelling at the prisoners as if they know as if as if It was a it was as though she had a map inside her head can you remember all that she asks yes he replies they hold hands Then get away from me as quick as you can, she says. She need not have told him that, but for the moment, they could not extra extricate themselves from the crowd. The trucks were still filing past. The people still insatiably ga gaping foreigners, whether from Eurasia or from East Asia, were a kind of strange animal. One never knew what became of them, apart from the few who were hanged as war criminals. The others simply vanished, presumably into forced labor camps. It occurred to him that he did not know what color the girl's eyes were. To turn his head and look at her would have been inconceivable folly. With hands locked together, invisible among the press of bodies, they stared steadily in front of them. There they are, right in the middle. Right there. Look at the coppers. Riot, riot police, too. And instead of the eyes of the girl, the eyes of an aged prisoner gaze mournfully at him. book okay and this is Winston making his way to the girl this is the encounter 
Let's just flip through this because we're not going to have time to read all this. They embrace, they touch, they talk. Or splash page, look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. We don't even have time to flip through this whole thing. Oh, look at this. There's a section where there's just a lot of text here. What is this? Chapter 3 War and Peace. So chapter three seems to be just a text of George Orwell's 1984. Nice, nice. Oh, wow. Great graphic novel, great graphic novel. Fantastic, fantastic, wow, wow, wow. right very cool very cool is there a part four no oh wow look at the artwork and colors i'll have to read this game and i highly recommend just from what we've looked at what we read what a fantastic book fantastic book george orwell's 1984 the graphic novel Adapted and illustrated by Fido Nesti, published in 2021, first published in Portuguese in Brazil in 2020. Okay, I hope you like the reading. I'm going to go back to the chat on the live stream on Twitch. Let me turn on.